Welcome to the Unimaginary Friendcast. This is live stream episode 266. It's a conversation with your socially distanced best friends. We are those best friends. I'm Nathan Von Edmondson. I'm Erin Marie uh, Betty right. Davis Jr. Oh God, oh God, oh God. And I'm DavidMonster.com. And today, oh or tonight rather, we're gonna be discussing forgiveness, what it is, how you do it, and if it's really worth it at all. And which are all brilliant questions, and I can't wait to learn the answers from David, who researched this heavily, but first. Really? Oh, God, wait. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is so hard. Being a producer is, like, so hard. All right. How about um, I'll give my breaking news first? So I, I completed working on a feature documentary film called American Birthright. I think I brought that up a few weeks ago and it's on the festival circuit and it's going to be, it's screened at the Seattle Jewish film festival on March 11th. So that was number two. We were at the Miami Jewish film festival. Now we're in Seattle and everything's virtual now. So we're all attending from our own homes, but it's pretty exciting and people are liking it and it's sparking a lot of interesting conversations. And as soon as it's available, I'll let you know. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Is there a central dot com that they can go to to find out where to see it and stuff or whatever yeah. and stuff? Um, AmericanBirthrightFilm.com has all the information about screenings and you can follow it around the country and the world wherever it goes. Yep. Okay. Sounds, yeah, sounds <laughs> cool. Go ahead, Nathan. I'll go next. So. I did something really good recently. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, what'd you do? Really good. What'd you do? Um, so I had all this stuff in boxes, and I took it to uh, what's it called? The thrift store. Goodwill. Goodwill. <laughs> and I dropped all these boxes off at Goodwill. I felt very proud of myself, but I made a mistake. Uh oh. What is it? So there's this movie coming out called. Uh, it's Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not sure when it comes out. I want to say within the next year at some point. It looks really good. I think it's produced by A24, which is one of the coolest production companies out there. I think it's A24. Um, what is it? Sir Gawain and the Blue Sir, Knight? What? Sir Gawain, Gawain and the Green uh -huh. Knight. So it's like Arthur, Arthurian legend era stories. Um, and when I saw that they made a film with it, it stars your, your guy. I have a guy? Yeah, your guy. Not you? Uh, the guy who was in Slumdog Millionaire. Oh. <laughs> Doug Patel? That is my That's guy. guy. <laughs> He's the star of it. Uh, it looks really good. Um, it's, you know, mythical and like knights and shining armor and swords and, you know, shit like that. Okay. Uh, when I saw that this movies coming out, I got really upset because I put the book of that story that I have from college in my box that was going to Goodwill. And then I forgot about it. I was like, oh, I'm not going to look for it. I'm going to donate it. So when I was going to donate this box at Goodwill, I opened up the box and it was the book on top and I took it back, which basically means I'm going to keep it in the house for another months or years before I donate it to Goodwill again. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> that sounds nice. I, Hooligan Mama says, congratulations, Aaron. And so does last time listener, first time caller. Mary Drader says, congratulations, too. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. your news this week? My news is that we had a lesbian lined up to be on the podcast. <laughs> and she betrayed us. She fucked us over hardcore. Uh, all lesbians are dead to me now. I will never forgive lesbians. Never forgive them. And I will never, ever forgive this one lesbian. And they're dead to me. Okay, go ahead. I'm not sure where to go from there. I thought we were going to... Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Wait, are you ready? Okay, we can do this week's gold star. Um, I'm going to throw a curveball... Uh, we all oh, agreed well. on a curveball, or <laughs> we didn't agree on the curveball. We all agreed on the gold star for this week, but I'm changing it. It's Can just, you do that? I, 
I'm doing it, and I'll tell you why. The gold star for this week is us. Not not Nate. I, that includes David. <laughs> oh. And also, um, Ian, who is uh, Ian Farley, who is a comedian and also a former guest on our podcast. We completed a film during a pandemic year. We started shooting it in early 2020, and we shot up until the day we got locked down. Literally, the day we got locked down, we were shooting. Um, and then we had to take a six month hiatus until we could sh safely shoot our final scene. And we spent the last few months editing and getting everything all shiny and together. And it is officially out in film festival world. So I just want to congratulate all of us. We have a short film. It's about 12 minutes. It's a comedy. It's got no dialogue and it's fucking adorable. It's called boxes, boxes, boxes. It's adorable. Yeah. Like, truly, like, family-friendly, your kids will love it. I even laughed out loud. I saw it, what, we had to see it five or six times to quality control it, and I laughed out loud every time. Sorry, David, put that in quotes. I'm sorry, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> no, 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 it was good, it was good. Even Nathan has funny, funny, uh, uh, I don't I don't want to say what it, he did something funny that made me laugh. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give it away. Go ahead. We actually all make an appearance in it. On oh, yeah, that's right. Is, uh, one of the co-stars. David has a, a pretty solid scene in there. I just have a little cameo. Wait, Nathan is Nathan and Ian are the leads, right? So if it was up for Oscars, they'd both be up for Best Actor. We'd be up for Supporting Actors, right? I think Nathan would be Supporting. Nathan, would you, Nathan? It would be Best Actor. I would be Best Supporting Actor. And you guys would be, like, ensemble. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we could all go up on stage. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm gonna, are you cool when you win the Oscar if I go up on stage, Nathan, right behind you? I will say that we did, uh, we shot big with film festivals for this first round, and we are applying to Oscar qualifying film festivals. <laughs> David laughs, but you never know. You never know. One never knoweth. All right, that is the gold star. I think we, I think we deserve it. I don't know what you guys think. Um, I'll take it. All right, moving forward, forgiveness is our topic. David, take it away. <sighs> All right, what is forgiveness? Uh, the definition is a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness or not, you stupid, stupid bitch. <laughs> that is what forgiveness is. Okay. Um, before we start, I, I, how can I put this? Sometimes I'm good with forgiveness. And sometimes I'm not. How are you guys with forgiveness? How, how, what is the question? How are we forgiven? How, how are you guys are? with forgiveness? Because oh. sometimes I'm really good with it and sometimes I'm really not good with it. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think sometimes it has to do with how fresh it is. Like if it's something very recent, it's hard to be forgiving. Um, and if you have time to reflect and let it go, then it's easier. Totally. And I will say it's funny because there are family members in watching the show right now. Uh, this is going to be funny because friends have found out that so, something that none of, no one in my family knows because they've never done this before. But when someone apologizes to me sincerely for some reason, I just let it go. Like it just automatically goes away and I forgive and it's over. But I have never forgiven anyone in my family ever for anything they've done because they never apologize sincerely and it just keeps building. And I want to, I want to point out the CB actor traveler has congratulated us for our film, but pointed out that Erin deserves more because she did more with the film. Because she's producing more. That might be because I'm, I have like a couple things in the works. Maybe that's what that means. Oh, I thought it meant because you were more responsible for the success of the project. I don't know. You, you were, I would give you more congratulations because you're more responsible than I was for sure. Well, I was, but uh, I don't, I was, I was uh, a producer. I wore the producer hat. So I, I definitely badgered all of you guys throughout the process to get shit done and 
to, you know, to schedule shoot dates and make you guys watch the film and all that stuff. So totally. But I think they're picking up on it because another listener congratulates us, said they want to see it, and then says, Aaron, you're on fire. Nobody else oh. in the cast. But Aaron, you are on fire. Like two pieces of film news today. That's it. All right, all right. And the other film, the the documentary, uh, we started in 2015. So, like, it's been a very, very, okay. very long process to get that film done. So, boxes, boxes, cool. boxes, only took a year. Boxes, boxes. Boxes. <laughs> That's a long time too. It took a year. Yeah. Uh, but that was because the pandemic happened. Yeah. Okay. Forgiveness. We're going to talk about first what it is. Uh, there's facts about forgiveness that I have that I didn't even think of. And then we're going to talk about how to do it. And then three of us are going to decide whether it's worth it to forgive anyone <laughs> okay. ever. And we can even talk about our own forgivenesses. Go okay. ahead. Yes. I have a question. You said that yeah. your family apologizes, but just not sincerely enough. So you don't actually accept apologies from your family. Is that well, no, my family never, ever, ever apologizes wow. until we get in the fight. And then like with my mom, she'd be like, well, I am sorry. I did the best I could. I am sorry. That'll be that kind of apology. And that gets nowhere with me. Okay. Like <laughs> when people go like when people come up to me like, David, I'm really sorry for what happened. I really, truly am. I didn't mean that to happen. For some reason, it just goes away. My No one in my family has ever done that under any circumstances ever. Um, we have a Taylor Swift quote here from an audience member. Cold was the steel of my axe to grind for the boys who broke my heart, and now I send their babies presents. What the hell does that supposed to mean? <laughs> yeah, everything. I, asking for a, a T Swift podcast, which we will do. I, I will make that happen. <laughs> All right, because I I kind of do want to do that too. Because everything I read and hear about Taylor Swift makes her sound more and more insane. All right. She does not sound like a balanced person at all. Okay, forgiveness. What is it? Facts about forgiveness. Uh, they say studies have shown that forgiveness makes you happier. Many studies have shown that that people can forgive are happy and healthier, and that actually holding on to grudges can harm your health by acting as a chronic stressor. Uh, and you can get bursts of cortisol, which is the stress-inducing hormone, uh, and ruminating on old uh, past discretions or past, uh, you know, like harmful acts towards you can raise your blood pressure. And over the long term, it can make you vulnerable to disease. That is what studies have said. Um, I don't know if I believe that. Do we believe? Yeah, I believe that. Hundred <laughs> percent, because you, anything you hang on to, it, it gets internalized, and it doesn't go away. It has to come out somehow. It'll probably come out in some other aggression. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you have a lot of forgiving to do. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it as it progresses. <laughs> don't right. they say that it's the poison that you drink and? You think you're giving it to someone else, but you actually are drinking it yourself. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's funny because like uh, there's people that I that don't. I'm not gonna say don't deserve it, but there's people that don't deserve forgiveness. But you do, yeah. Like Nathan said, you're supposed to do it for yourself. But I kind of don't want to forgive some people because I don't want them to come any closer. So like when you don't forgive, you kind of put up a barrier. But we'll find out more about it, and then we'll see if I if that's the correct action for me or not. You guys can decide on that. Um, this is self-explanatory. Lack of forgiveness erodes a sense of partnership. So within a relationship, it erodes the sense of partnership. Like especially in a marriage, if you don't forgive, you're fucked. Any, yeah, okay, good. We'll continue on. Intention and responsibility make a difference. It is much easier to forgive someone who didn't realize they were causing harm than a person who intentionally hurts others. To work on forgiveness, think about all the external circumstances that contributed to the harmful behavior. So they're saying that if, if, you, if someone did something bad towards you, you try to think of all the circumstances that caused them to do that. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So, but, but in a, that's how you would go about forgiving them. Like, oh, they must have had a bad day or they must have like, somebody must have hurt them. And they like, you're, are you making excuses for them in a way? No, you're just, I think that you're trying to build your compassion to figure out why they did what they did. 
Yeah, because because it's it's same because you can you can if you if you understand you can forgive better. I mean, which is mean like I, I think that we're dealing with. I think we have to realize that we're dealing with sane people because there's some people that are going to do things to you that are insane and don't even deal with forgiveness. Just get them out of your life. But this is just normal everyday people who do things to other people because when you live with people, that's what happens. Go ahead. Yeah. Question about forgiveness then. So. Yeah. It just was sparked by this audience comment. Sometimes the person that fucked you over can fuck off, but you can move on as an individual. Well said. So that, but that got me thinking if you, if someone hurts you um, and you don't want them a part of your life, can you forgive them just internally and move on? Or does forgiveness have to be engaging with that person and letting them know they're forgiven and then you can move on? Uh, forgiveness is for you. So no, cause you, okay. you, it's also, they talk about a process of forgiving people that are dead, that are gone from your life. You have yeah, to do yeah. that, That's true. which I find it a lot easier to forgive dead people than it is to forgive live people. That's is just that, me though. Is that because you won? Uh, it's because I won and because I don't have to deal with them ever again. Like, yeah, I have this, uh, we'll talk about it more. I have this weird thing with forgive forgiveness. Emotions can get in the way of forgiveness and it's like, duh, but that's a good thing to remind yourself of. Like that seems so ridiculously simple, but it's a good thing to remind yourself of at the time is that it, it could, emotions sometimes you can make things either, either seem bigger or worse or what have you. Totally. Okay, choosing forgiveness can be an act of empowerment, which is what Aaron was kind of talking about. Hanging on to the anger and bitterness means giving the perpetrator continued power over our lives while letting it go frees us psychologically. Yeah, totally. See, I have a difference between letting go and forgiveness. Uh, yeah. Do you think there's a difference? Um. Well, forgiving is like is is absolving the person of of their. Here, let's go back to that. Let's go back to. You're right. You're right. There is a difference. It's, it's a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings. Oh, to release feelings of resentment. Oh, so I could do that all day long, though. <laughs> nah, I still hate those people. I still have so much hate in my heart for so many people. That's beautiful. So that's. Uh, those are facts about forgiveness. Do you guys have any questions or facts do you guys want to share about your own forgivingness? Well, it reminds me a lot about gratitude and gratitude exercises and how there's a ton of data, like scientific data that shows being practicing gratitude, which is like actively writing it down or thinking about things you're grateful for, people you're grateful for actually make you happier. Like it actually makes you happier. Um, yeah. And it seems like forgiveness is pretty much the same thing. I agree. And I, I practice gratitude as much as possible. And gratitude comes easier <laughs> than forgiveness for me. And the listener says, forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Mark Twain. That's beautiful, actually. This is getting um, all the willies. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. I think uh, Megan Kelly, I believe it was, summed it up pretty well. And I've heard this in different forms, but I thought she kind of hit the nail on the head. And she talked about how being unwilling to forgive or viewing yourself being wronged in that way puts you in the victim state, in a victim mentality, like I'm a victim. And her point is that it's not that you're forgiving them of things that they've done, but instead of making yourself a victim, you can look at it as though you were a target for something bad. Um, so it, it doesn't put you in that victim mentality. So I think that's very yeah. tightly intertwined with this forgiveness topic. I agree with you 100%, but people don't realize sometimes when you make yourself the victim of another person's act, it can actually make that person feel worse. So it works better than forgiving <laughs> especially especially when we have mothers in the room and you can attest to this sometimes with mothers that works really well when you make yourself a victim of something a mother did 
they get really guilty and it really hurts them at the soul, the, you know, the, the, the rock, the ice that, that is where their heart should be. That's right, exactly. mothers? Anybody want to comment? Go ahead, yeah. That doesn't sound very kind. It sounds David. nice and manipulative. And that's how it was raised. Manipulation was was our gravy that we that we suckled from the teat of our mothers in my family. Good. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be a mother soon, Aaron. You're gonna see. I've heard a few mothers say this that the the that the 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 that the worst hurt you can ever feel is that hurt that comes from your children. The, 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 anyways, whatever you'll see. <laughs> ah! You better treat, you better treat your kids good. Cause they'll come for you. So could you guys want to learn how to forgive? Yes, please. Nathan, you want to, are you in, are you still in? <laughs> I think I can practice. Okay, step one, move on to the next act. Your past history and all of your hurts are no longer here in your physical reality. They okay. no longer exist. Yeah, it's in the past. Yeah, you create all of your hurt. That's true. I think uh, one of the, something I heard recently that I thought was very good that it points to that is, are you gonna spend more time and energy on something that's in the past? versus your future. Totally, 100%. And I find that that's 100% true, but it's it's sometimes harder to, to do. It's it's hard, it's not easy to do. Sorry, our cat is getting into trouble right now. Do you guys remember what we were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that what Nathan said is 100% true, but sometimes it's very hard to practice moving on. Sometimes it's very difficult to practice. Anybody? Yeah, totally. Sure. We have a Mary Drader oh. says there are those people that have never done anything that needs forgiveness. I want to point out that yeah. that's David Monster's mom. And I would like to point out that that's a perfect visual aid, mom. You have no idea what an amazing visual aid that was. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and then step two is reconnect to the spirit. Uh, the website I got it off of, uh, they were just talking about like, if it's God, it's God, if it's spirituality, whatever your spirituality is, uh, reconnect to that because it bypasses your emotion and your, you know, your analyticalness and you're just, you're kind of, you're always trying to tap into kindness and all that bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three, don't go to sleep angry. Ooh. Um, yeah, go ahead. I just, I can't sleep when I'm angry. So that makes sense. <laughs> well, you guys, because it's easy. I think it's easier for single people to go to sleep not angry. You guys are married. Is there, like, what do you do when you're angry? Do you guys talk, like, okay, we can't go to sleep angry. We're going to talk through it. Or how does that work? I mean, for us personally? Yeah, because you guys are, I'm assuming, uh, that is rude for me to assume, but I'm assuming you guys are going to sleep together in the same bed. We do sleep then, in the same bed. So when there's anger, like how do you practice, how do you practice don't go to sleep angry when there's something you guys are angry about? I can answer this. We've never been angry at each other. It's so, Ever. Yeah, okay. Never it is it. honestly rare. Like it happens for sure, but it's not like, it's not an every. It's, it's just not a, a regular occurrence. Um, it just depends on what the thing is. So um, when it happens, you guys are easy to handle it and take care of it. Or even like, not even if you're angry at each other, but if there's an anger that happens, you know, with someone else in the family, like one person's really upset, how do you deal with that? Does the other person help the other person through that? Or like what? Yeah, sure. If we're upset about something external, we're each other's sounding boards, especially like now that like we're we're grateful to have each other because the you know the whole world is isolated and we don't have like our our social network like we used to when there wasn't a pandemic. Um, people to the demodemical hang out with and vent to, and so yeah, of course we're we're that for each other. That are you guys grateful to have that at least? 
But yeah, absolutely. My, my brother. Okay, good. For Davis says you stamp around mad for a minute and then figure it out. Oh, that's cute. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny, but that's actually, I mean, it's true because sometimes you just need to be pissed off for a little bit and then you can shake it off or let it go or whatever it is. But sometimes you just cool. have to be mad. Cool. Okay, step four, switch the focus from blaming others to understanding yourself. Whenever you're upset over the conduct of others, take the focus off to take the focus off those you're holding responsible for your inner distress. Shift your mental energy to allowing yourself to be with whatever you're feeling. Let the experience be as it may without blaming others for your feelings. Don't blame yourself either. Just allow the experience to unfold and tell yourself that no one has the power to make you uneasy about your consent and that you're unwilling to grant the authority to this person right now. Sure. I agree. Sometimes that's also difficult to do because you're so pissed off. Yeah. But I agree. You should. And and if I want to say also in all of these instances, if you find yourself constantly dealing with this, I think it's better to get rid of the person that's causing this. Yeah. Any, anybody? I'm just listening to your dishes being washed again. Oh, yeah. Someone's washing dishes. Oh, we have a homeless shelter. Point, David. I think it um, if you, well, I've heard this so many times. I'm sure you've heard it. All of you have heard it. You, you are the average of the five people you're around the most. And if one of those people is just constantly irritating you or causing problems or you, you know, tearing you down or bringing you down in some way that can't be resolved, then what, what, what are you doing to your life if you're keeping up? With yeah, which is hard sometimes because sometimes you're in situations where, though, especially when you're a child, you're in a situation where those are the people. Like you can't get away from those people. And as you get older, sometimes it's difficult because the like your friends are your friends, and you don't see it. You know what I mean? I think it takes to, to be an adult to really like put the you know, you know what I mean. Like it's also important to not be afraid of having that conversation and seeing if you can have that conversation. And that's kind of a determining factor as well. Totally. And I think it's also important to not be afraid to be alone too, to realize that you might lose this person, which if they, if you're going to lose it over that, fine. Yeah. Uh, this is another thing that I have a hard time with, with uh, avoid telling people what to do. I don't tell people what to do. But I'm, I'm finally at the point where I realize that when people ask for advice, they don't want it. People don't want advice. And I try never to give advice ever, ever, ever. And I find myself doing it. Um, uh, and it also says, avoid thoughts and activities that involve telling people who are perfectly capable of making their own choices what to do. And I agree with this. People don't like it. Even when they come to you for advice, they don't want it. They well, absolutely don't want it. I'm push back on that. If they're coming to you and asking for advice, then they can't be mad if you give advice. But they will. But you'll find in life that that'll happen to you, though. I think this is it. Yeah, this is an interesting topic, actually, because I think it's useful to search out information, and that's what people think they're doing. They're trying to get, you know, some evidence of different views of what people would do, right? But they can use it as... Uh, you know, a way to blame and not take responsibility for the choice. So if, if you gave that advice, they take that advice, then it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I tend to do now, I, you guys have probably heard me say this, is I'll tend to go like, well, I can't tell you what to do, but this is what I would do, or this is what I have done in the past. And I try not to do that even that much, but I'll say like, yeah, this is what I've done. I don't know. Like you need to do your, I tell people you need to do your own research. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But people, I've even had people get mad at me for that. Like, and I told you, I don't know. Yeah, but you did. And it's like, I don't have time. I don't have, and then I think most people bring problems up to you because they want to talk about the problem and they want to sue their own ego for what they're going to do. But People, I mean, obviously, if people come to you with a problem, they want to vent. That's that's different. But if they're yeah. like, I need your advice, and then you give your advice, and they come out and you give your advice, then I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, one hundred percent. 
So what do you want? Yeah, I think there's also, yeah, there's different scenarios depending on the individual and the question or the situation, right? There's certain yeah. There's certain realities where it's like someone just actually needs some advice and you can provide that and it's very simple and clean. But then there's those other things where they're just actually just looking for a way to vent about their or wallow in their problem as opposed to find a solution. Yeah. One hundred percent. I feel about I yeah, I, I I can have low tolerance for those situations too. Like people that want advice but you but you know they're not gonna take it because they haven't taken it a thousand times before. And yeah. This is almost a waste of a conversation, even though I care about you and I want to help and I know you need help, you're seeking help. Like, God damn it. <laughs> no, 100%. I'm sick of it. That's why I've realized I don't want to, I don't even want to, I don't even want to talk to people about their problems anymore. It's because it always ends up being about them and I'm just not... And people never, like, I've never, I, I don't have, I don't think I've ever had anyone in my life that cares, like, that, yeah, like, it's never, it's never reciprocal, ever, so I'm done, like, your problems are your problems, I don't care, deal with it yourself, I just don't care, because there's not, yeah, bye, anyway, so, I'm coming to the, the end of the what to do list. And I want our listeners, if they, if they, if they're dealing with forgiveness right now, like, if there's someone in their life that they are thinking about forgiving or if there's someone they want to forgive them, I want them to talk to us about that because we're going to be dealing with that as soon as the list is over. And the next, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. The okay. next step on the list is learning to let go and be like water substitute listening for directing and telling. So it's saying, listen, instead of trying to tell people what to do or talk. Nobody does this. Human beings do not do this, but go ahead. I'm just listening. <laughs> Touche, botch. Um, yeah. Yeah. I already, I, it's hard. It's sometimes it's hard to let things go, but I am like water and I do listen. Um, I don't know a lot of other people who are good listeners. So that's all. So every human race, will you guys tell the rest of the human race? to start being good listeners and stop being directors and tellers. Will you guys do that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, you two, you, oh, Nathan I'll... and Aaron, it's your responsibility to get that out to the rest of the All right. The next one is take responsibility for your part. This is what you have to do. This is what I have seen and I'm doing it again. I'm giving advice, but this is what I've seen is the most successful way to end a conflict with someone and to resolve it is to not expect anything from that person, but say to that person, I am sorry that I did this. And you don't stand there expecting them to apologize, but you just say, I'm sorry for what you did. When you're dealing with the same person, they will say, thank you for saying that. And I'm sorry that I did this. When you're dealing with a person that you probably shouldn't be hanging out with, they'll go, they'll tell you how it made them feel and they'll go on about it. Instead of saying, thank you, they'll just talk about it and talk about how they feel and they won't give their part of it. When someone doesn't apologize to you for their part of it and it's very blatant what they did, give them arm's length because they're going to keep doing that. They're showing you who they are and they're going to keep doing that for the rest of their lives. Okay. Anybody? Nobody? I okay. Get there's truth to that for sure. Okay, cool. The next step is let go of resentments. Resentments don't come from the conduct of the other party in the altercation. No, no, no. They survive and thrive because you're unwilling to end that altercation with an offering of kindness. I find this to be true. Sometimes it's hard for me to offer kindness to people who have been shitty to me. How about you guys? Yep. Yeah, it is hard. I mean, I, I'm not, it's like, I don't have much to say because I am a green. It's, okay. It's really hard to be kind. <laughs> what about you, Nathan? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. I'm sorry for what I did, Nathan. Thank you. Um, uh, be kind instead of right. This is easy when you care about the person. When you don't care about the person as much, I find it's not quite as easy. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. You really think you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's funny because I found that you like there. 
people can be right in different ways. People can be, someone can be totally wrong, but be right because that's what they want. So when you have a relationship, like even though the, it's just a conflict and you just got to let it go and let both people be right, even though you are right and they're wrong. Does that make any sense? Yeah. In a marriage, you guys, I'm, I'm sure have seen that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Practice giving. Giving. I don't know. I got bored. I read it. This is the one where I was like, it's like practice giving, just giving to the person, being a giving person. And I just got bored reading the the, the description of it. So yeah. go ahead. I thought you guys would go, go. I, I mean, I don't have much to say about these because they're good. Like, yeah, being a giving, giving helps with forgiveness and helps with kindness and compassion and all these things. Yeah, you're giving very good advice, David. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. I stole it all. I stole it all from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. Oh, he's the shit. Oh, you know him? Oh, yeah. He's written a lot of books. He was on PBS all the time for a while. I think he just passed away maybe two years ago. We're stealing um, from a dead man? Yeah. So think about that. I forgive you, Dr. Dwyer, Dyer, but Dyer. Um, this is, I, I think this is going on a lot now, especially if you go on social media, you find this. Stop looking for occasions to be offended. Yeah, this is what, yeah. so here's the thing. We're talking about forgiveness, but aren't we in a, a time where people are just, what's the word? Canceling. Ugh, right? <laughs> where there's no, so forgiveness implies that potentially there's room for growth, right? Or that we're, in, that we're fallible, fallible, that we make mistakes, right? So if you're unwilling to offer forgiveness um, at large, culturally, what, what kind of situation are we creating in that, that regard? Yeah, I mean, God, if we go down that rabbit hole of social media, politics, how divided we are, forgiveness is probably the most important topic on the planet right now. Totally. I'm so divided because I'm all for forgiveness and gratefulness and gratitude, but I'm one, I'm 100% for the cancel culture. I love the cancel culture. In fact, I just canceled Catherine Hepburn on my social media this week and it's amazing. It feels so good. It feels so good to just destroy someone who just deserves it. All right, go ahead. What? Do you need, um, you need to practice some forgiveness. You should buy a Wayne Dyer book and read it. <laughs> Why would I can just steal this stuff off the internet? Um, <laughs> number 12, we've kind of, he's kind of said it in different ways. Don't live in the past, be present. Totally true. Sometimes it's hard, very hard. Uh, number 13 is what I've always said, and a lot. I think this is where a lot of self-help falls down the rabbit hole, and a lot of philosophies fuck themselves, is embrace your dark times, embrace the negative, because there's a lot to be learned from that. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I agree. Okay, I'll uh, bullshit, David, that's bullshit. <laughs> Number 14, refrain from judgment. I love being judgmental. Go ahead, yeah, Aaron, what are you gonna say? I mean, easier said than done, right? I love being judgmental. I love judging. I love being petty. I love uh, tearing apart people's appearances and stuff. I won't do it to their face, but I have found, I have found that my most successful technique for being non-judgmental is to think about the things that I don't want to be judged for or the things that I know that I've done wrong that that I feel bad about. Hey, so David, yeah. How does being judgmental improve your life? Oh God, it's so wonderful. My greatest accomplishment ever, it was at your guys' house. It was so funny, and none of you laughed because you guys, none of you have any sense of humor. We were watching the Golden Globes and fucking um uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's sister, I forgot her name. Maggie? Maggie Gyllenhaal is a very unattractive woman. And she w came up to the podium and someone styled her. She looked like her outfit was garbage. She just looked like complete trash. And whoever did it made her breasts look like two old man ball sacks. <laughs> and they just looked terrible. And I said, and I said, oh my God, why hasn't anyone told Maggie Gyllenhaal what human breasts are supposed to look like? 
And I remember everyone in the room was just like, oh, David, that's so terrible. But it's brilliant and it's amazing. And it's like, if you're going to spend money to arrive at these events and if you're going to get paid $10 million to be in a film, fucking look like something we want to look at. That's how it improves my life. And yes, I do think that we should be more grateful for giving, but Maggie Gyllenhaal's breasts are canceled. I have so much to say about that, but... Uh, go, ready, go, bring it. In the past, we want to learn the Yeah, I'm trying that. to forgive you for being such a dick. <laughs> Can you guys forgive me? Ruining our party. Yeah, right. From offending everyone. It was <laughs> was that the the Golden Globes viewing where you had a falling out with uh, someone after? Yes, and I told her because she didn't appreciate that, and I told her. <laughs> I remember telling her at your party. I said, "If you have a problem with that, then I sincerely question your level of intelligence." I don't. I <laughs> lost a lifelong friend and work partner that night. Oh, God. It wasn't just that, it was so many other things. I mean, she's she's not a great friend or person. It's not like I'm insane. <laughs> a lot of forgiveness has been practiced in that world. Wait, can you guys forgive me? What do we have to forgive you for? Ruining our- Wait, <laughs> ruining your party, do you forgive me for- Did it ruin your party? Do you guys feel like it ruined your party? No, that was so long ago. I don't, I don't yeah. <laughs> we have CB actor Travel that says, what happened, David? So angry. Can you really forgive? I don't remember what, I don't remember what he's referring to. Re- referring to your overall demeanor. Oh, um, I can forgive some things, Chris. Like I said, some things I have yet, some things I'm working on. It's a work, work in progress. David. So we're so refrain from judgment is a, is a big step. <laughs> and the last one is send love. So I'm sending Maggie Gyllenhaal's disgusting breasts some love. <laughs> okay, this is great. This is really helpful. <laughs> How funny! So uh, let's work on forgiveness. Is forgiveness worth it? I think it is definitely worth it because going back to the first thing we talked about was that it's something that sticks inside of you and makes your life worse and likely doesn't affect the other person. So yes, you should forgive for yourself. I mean, it sounds like forgiveness can be selfish, but um, yeah, maybe forgiveness is selfish. I I wouldn't say selfish. It's self self providing, but not selfish. Because selfish is something you do that precludes other people at their expense. Like, it doesn't do that. I mean, unless you're forgiving someone and not telling them, then only you benefit from that forgiveness. That's true. Yeah, and that's also assuming that they... Care? Yeah, or know (laughs) that that's the dynamic. Because I think there's certain situations where you might harbor resentment or anger of something, and they have no idea. But they don't even, yeah, they don't think about it anymore. It's, you know, it's not present in their life the way it's present in your life. Um, and it is selfish in the sense that it is about yourself, but it's selfless in the sense that it releases you to be more present and fully there for your life in the moment and the people around you in the moment, um, as opposed to, so it's actually very selfless because when you, when you have this inability to forgive and hang on to resentment, you spill that bitterness around you uh, in excessive degrees. Mm, that's a good point. I agree. That is a good point, and I agree. And and I'm going to ask the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, forgiveness is not selfish. No, it's not selfish. I, it's not selfish. Selfish is is it's the opposite of selfish because you're trying to be bigger. You're trying to like grant something. And I want to send this out to CB Actor Traveler who I don't know if he was here, like, and the rest of the listeners, like, is there someone you're trying to forgive that you find it difficult? And to the, my two co-hosts, is there someone in your life you guys are trying to forgive and you're finding it difficult? Or are you, are you wanting forgiveness from someone else? Um, I'm sure I can come up with some. Is that, do I need to name names? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just, you can talk about it a little if you want to or not. I would say just being human, you're going to have both of those things in your life. You're going to have moments where you acted 
um, inappropriately or hurt other people and carry um, regret over that and desire forgiveness for actions, whether premeditated or not. Um, and then there's going to be, this is like the, the standard stuff of being human. And then there's going to be people in your life that you harbor resentment for, for what they've quote done to you or made happen to you that has stuck around or, you know, spent too much time in your life at different points. And yeah, everyone's, I think everyone's dealing with that stuff to their own personal degrees. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, it's funny because there's some things that I've done where I, I don't, I'm not seeking forgiveness because I don't think I deserve forgiveness, but I just wish that I could do something to, to make that person or the, like to do something for that person, like just to take it, take away the hurt, but I don't want like the forgiveness. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Is that, is, yeah. Does that have to do with like, you recognize you were in the wrong. So there's, oh yeah, there's no need. There's no really need to, you don't want to say like, it's not saying that this is right where I was right. Or it was, you know, you are seeing what I did as not having, not being wrong. Right. So what you yeah. the, the thing like, I have a lot of sympathy for that because it's like an empathy. It's like you can do something wrong and know it's wrong and feel like you deserve to be almost like punished for it. Right. Um, and if someone were to forgive you, it's like, it's not saying that it's right. It's just them releasing themselves more than you of that burden, perhaps releasing yeah. that burden too, which is a very beautiful gesture to have. Um, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> at least society at large isn't practicing regularly right now. But um, but also, it doesn't mean that there won't be consequences, and we have to learn from consequences of what we've done. So someone could forgive you, but then they could still not be your friend, for example. And you know, that's you know, it's nice that they for have forgiven you, but then it's you know, the damage was done, and you just have to move on and learn, live and learn from there. So it's yeah. very nuanced, and we don't get it's not always clean. It's funny because there's sometimes when you do something to someone else that you really care about, because you're a sane person and you care about them, I feel like there's been times when I have built it up even more than it is. And then when you, oh, like you go to the person, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, thank you for apologizing. Don't worry. And you're like, no, please let me make it. And they're like, no, just shut up about it. Like it's done. Like you make it into this huge thing. And CB Actor Traveler says to err is human, to forgive is divine. Alexander Pope. I forgot about that. And how do we do that? How do we become divine? How do we become divine? I think, divine. Uh, it's, yeah. I think it starts with reading uh, Dianetics. Dianetics? <laughs> oh, God. There is no forgiveness in there. And they even talk about how, like, when, when you've done something, like, when you're a Scientologist, you've done something to someone else, like they deserved it, like because you're you're on the right path. Like there is no forgiveness, there is no compassion in that religion That's whatsoever. Well, I would say that we've learned that it's worth it to forgive and how to do it. I'd say that's yeah. a successful podcast, in my opinion. Yeah. Any last minute thoughts before we wrap it up? Um yeah, like I said, I think it's easier to forgive dead people. Because, <laughs> like, there's some people, like, like I don't know, like, it's because, like, let's take my father, who was one of the worst people I've ever known. Like, since he died, like, when he, before he died, I didn't want to forgive him because I didn't want to have anything to do with him. And I don't. I hope I never meet him, like, if there's an afterlife, which I don't think there is or a heaven or anything. I don't want to meet him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to have any contact. And this is why I hate my family the most. Cause if there is an afterlife, they're going to try to find me and they're going to be like, David, it's your dad. Like, come here. And they're like, no, I don't want to see him. What's wrong with you? And God, now I'm getting all mad. Now I'm not going to be able to forgive him. But I, it's funny because I, I realized that he has pro he had problems, he had mental problems and it's easier to forgive him now. I don't love him or feel better about him, but I forgive him and like, okay, you're a crazy person, you're off. And he's become less of my life. But then there's some people in my family that are still alive that I'm having problems <laughs> forgiving because I don't want to take down the barrier, if that makes any sense. Yeah. 
It's a really good question here. Is there anything that's unforgivable? Yes. I think that's tough, tough to answer. Uh, I can answer it very quickly. Maggie Gyllenhaal's breasts, obviously. <laughs> are unforgivable. I wish I had that picture. I'm going to find that picture. Because even somebody there, I don't remember if it was Aaron, but somebody said like, oh, that's not the most flattering dress. Somebody said it right after. But it's true. Uh, it didn't look great. But I mean, it's also subjective too, what you think is beautiful. So. No, no. Male ball sacks on a woman's breasts are not beautiful. I mean, maybe there's someone that's into that. Somebody's into that. I don't mean to completely discredit that question because it is a great question. It's a really hard question. I kind of like that you gave us an out. Now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Are you, oh, you're talking about what I said about the barrier and all that yeah, stuff? What, uh, our listener question, is there anything that's unforgivable? Oh, is there anything that's unforgivable? Yes. The big crimes, like if someone murders your a family member or... Someone does something, ugh, yeah. So yeah, like the worst I can think of is say genocide, right? Genocide's pretty terrible. Like Hitler, I feel like is unforgivable. Right. Like that's but, a pretty bad crime. But you see those people that are like, I for, I think it's a self selfless, self 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 preserving self. Because I've seen those people that are like, I forgive him because I have to. I have to get this out. Like he was a crazy person. Maybe he needed forgiveness. Like he needed whatever. So uh, yeah, it's almost like I think the difference is you don't forgive the act. Like there's the confusion if you forgive, it, it's that you're forgiving the act. You're not saying the act is, yeah. open, but you could be forgiving the the individual behind the act when you recognize the flaws inherent in their personality. Mm. So you think I the, need to remember that. Yeah, the mo the mother whose son was murdered by someone else. And that mother forgives the person who murdered her son um, because, well, it's, you know, the, the murder isn't forgivable. Like, that's an unforgivable yeah. act. But it's the, the individual, what was the individual circumstances where th that happened? And, that, and, and then it's, yeah. it goes to the who is forgiveness for? Is it for yourself? Or yeah. But I just think that's such an amazing strength. Like I've seen those videos where the mother forgives the murderer and it's like, like what did she, how, how did she come to that? That's so amazing. And we are amazing. A listener has said, Hooligan Mama says, this is a great topic. Thank you, friends. We're best friends. We're, all We're best her friends. best friends. No, I, she's an interesting person. I'd like to know uh, uh, her forgiveness is, is and stuff. Anyways, go ahead. Well, um, <laughs> I would too, but we don't have time today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys all for tuning in, especially um, we have we did do two live streams in a row, and thank you for everyone who stuck with us the whole time. Yeah, thank you. We'll be back again, and we thank you for your service and your best friendship. At Unimaginary Friend is where you can find us on Facebook and Instagram, and there you will be able to know our next live stream date and time. So. And Twitter, twat us on Twitter. Don't go to Twitter. We don't do anything on Twitter. <laughs> Stop trying to make Twitter happen, David. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> I I can make. Wait a minute. We gotta do Twitter because I recently had a book and a game come out and everything, and all of a sudden, uh, on another Twitter account that I have, like I didn't go to it for a while. Uh, they started, people started being active on it and like 150 people joined in like three days, my Twitter, because people were talking about it. So you never know, like it could just happen out of nowhere. I got to birth a baby. I don't got time for Twitter. I also got to point out that Twitter is a place where forgiveness is given like so easily and freely and at such large, ample oh, multitudes. So it's true. It's it true. is a very, yeah, generous, wonderful place. Oh, like toilets for forgiveness. I have a good idea. After Valour is born, let's put her in charge of our social media. Well, yeah, someone asked a few a few weeks ago when when Valour von Edmondson is born, if like, what's going to happen to the podcast. And I think the proper answer is we're going to have a fourth co-host. Yeah, just stick her right next to you. What's the big deal? And you can even breastfeed her on the air. Who cares? We're going to give her a little mic and turn it up to the loudest volume. So when she cries, everyone just listens to that. And <laughs> we're releasing this kind of out of order, but uh, we will um, blow the lid off of who won the due date or the birth date. Wait, 
Wait, can I do March 7th? Can I do 3 7 21? You can. You can. Okay, I want March 7th. That's uh, a beautiful number. Why hasn't anyone picked that one? Someone has. I know. I know because it's 3 times 7 equals 21. Hello. Oh. All right. We'll see. All right. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, listeners. And thank you. What a wonderful uh, yeah, time and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. What? <laughs> 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 huh, what what'd you say what wrap it up <laughs> okay um <laughs> to to forget oh god i forgot it wait to forgive is human to air is divine bitch <laughs> <laughs>